Well hello and welcome to Berkshire Guitar and Fire Repairs. A quite a quick video today I want to show you how to bias the Marshall JCM 900. Fairly straightforward on this amplifier as it does have a bias pot which does make our life easy. I'm going to show you how to bias it using a bias meter and I'll also give you a quick tip on biasing this sort of amp if you don't have a bias meter. So join me now as I take the chassis out and we bias this amp for the client. Well here we are with the chassis out and I've put a couple of bias meters onto the valves. This amp uses 5881 valves, not EL34s or 6L6s. The customer doesn't want a new set so we're just going to have to do the best we can with what we've got here. So let's turn on the amp and see what happens. Turn on the HT. Okay, it's quite high plate voltage, look, 500. It's falling, of course, as the valves are drawing current. The valves were warm, so they've come up quite quickly. The correct bias current for a 470 volt plate with a 5.8 Eight, one is about 40 milliamps so these are both a little bit low so one showing 32 look one showing 27 or 28 that's about a 4 milliamp difference I'm happy with that he doesn't want new valves anyway but I think I'll tweak the bias up a little bit and to do that I'm just going to have to flip the chassis upside down get these meters where we can see them and then I will show you how to adjust the bias. Of course you don't need two meters, one is fine, but it does mean you have to check one pair and then just as a final thing check that the other pair are the same. But if you've got a matched quad of course you can rely on the people supplying you the valves to match those up for you. So in theory you only need to check one. But I always check the other side of the push-pull arrangement as well. So let's get this beast upside down and I'll rejoin you then. Right here we are with the amp the other way up supported on some pieces of wood here and here. Here are the bias meters where we can see them and one's about 30 milliamps and one's about 27 milliamps. Okay the critical piece of information the bias adjustment pot is here I'll just pull back so that you can see where that is. VR2 and clockwise increases the bias current, anti-clockwise decreases. So I'm just going to turn gently clockwise and we can see the bias current coming up. I'm not going to set this to 40, I like to bias a little bit cool, so I think 30, 37, 38 look on, on the right hand one and the left hand one's a little bit lower but that's because the valves are somewhat mismatched. If we had a new set of valves in here they would be a bit better matched but there's no problem whatsoever with that degree of mismatch. There we go, quite easy. Nothing much to that. Just turn that clockwise to increase the bias, anti-clockwise to decrease the bias and you're away. I briefly want to mention a way of biasing an amplifier like this if you don't happen to have a bias meter. If you are ever going to be biasing amplifiers, I strongly recommend you just buy yourself a bias meter. They're about £100. I get them from Eurotubes. They're the best bias meters on the market, so I do recommend them. They've got a new L, uh, not LED, yeah, yeah, an LED version out, which I've got. And I'm just using my old LCD versions at the moment. So, But if you don't want to go to the expense of that, and it's quite interesting anyway, here are the power valves, one, two, three, four. The cathodes of the power valves are these two that join together here. So that's the cathode there and there and there. And these are grounded. They go to, to, to earth, basically. If you wanted to, you can cut this connection here, just cut it, and solder in series with it make a neat job obviously a 1 ohm uh, 2 watt power resistor put one in each of the cathodes 
So instead of the cathode going straight to ground, it goes to ground via a 1 ohm resistor. That makes no difference whatsoever to the sound, and you can just leave those resistors in permanently. However, all of the amp current goes down this 1 ohm resistor now, and so you can just measure using an ordinary bog standard multimeter, something like this, and set it to the millivolts scale. Look here. In my, in my case it's 200 millivolts, and just measure the voltage across that 1 ohm resistor. And by Ohm's law, the voltage you measure will be the current through the resistor. So if you measured 25 millivolts across that 1 ohm resistor, you would have 25 milliamps going through that valve. If you measured 35 millivolts across that 1 ohm resistor, you would have 35 milliamps going through the valve. So using an ordinary meter, you can just go along the 1 ohm resistors on the millivolt scale on the meter and just read off the currents on each of the valves. That's quite neat, but it is a bit of a pest to have to cut and make a decent joint for each of those 1 ohm resistors. And I avoid it if possible because obviously you're changing the amp from stock. So just to re remind you, it has no effect whatsoever on the sound. You can leave those 1 ohm resistors in. They're a very, very low resistance. 1 ohm is almost nothing, so you don't need to worry about it. So there's the amp up on the bench after biasing, and it all seems to sound fine. That's one channel, you can hear a bit of reverb there, I've got a, a reverb tank hanging on, off the end there. And the second channel. all working nicely. It could do with a new set of valves, this amp, but I will ask the customer if he wants a new set, but I think we'll probably carry on with these for a couple more years. They've got a bit more life left in them. And that was a fairly simple bias, as Marshall have thoughtfully added a bias pot on the inside, which they don't always do. Well, there you go. Not much to that one. Fairly straightforward, if you know what you're doing. And I do advise you to buy yourself a bias meter if you're planning on doing much amplifier biasing. They're relatively cheap. I like Eurotubes meters. I think they're the best on the market. And about $100, $120 will buy you their latest version. So do invest in one of those if you're going to be doing your own biasing from now on. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.